Welcome to Nand Awakening Souls Unlimited Potential. My name is Eva and I'm so happy to have you here with me. Today I want to talk about judgment and judgment with regards to judgment of self and also judgment of others. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because this is something that I've been working through, you know, for some time to try and release the judgment that I have, especially towards other people, you know, and also to myself for failing short on, you know, the goals or the expectations that I have of myself. So when I judge others, it's not really something that I, I like about myself. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing details on that. So one thing that I realized during this entire process is that anytime you're passing judgment on others, you're actually passing judgment on yourself. Here's what most people do. They tend to project their own issues onto others. Okay, meaning when you notice something that is wrong with that other person, it's in most cases something that is actually wrong inside of you. And because most people don't want to deal with those negative aspects of themselves, it's easier when they project them on others and then that will now look like judgment to others. You know, oh, look at that person. I don't like the way they talk to other people. It is because you don't like the way that you talk to other people. And most people are not willing to accept this about themselves. Okay, so it's easier for them to put their entire focus on hating on another person rather than actually going inside of them and being introspective and trying to figure out why am I like this? How can I be better? And if you're watching this video, this is something that I'd ask of you just to aim to be better. Don't ever have expectation on other people because you cannot control other people's actions or choices. It's impossible. They're responsible for them. The person that you can control is yourself. That's the only kind of control you have. So the minute you start externalizing your issues, you know, making it seem like the reason why maybe you're miserable is because of that other person. No, the reason why you're miserable is because you're choosing to be miserable. How can I get out of that? So when it comes to judgment, it's when you notice something about someone else that you don't like, it's not for this other person to change. It's for you to change your perception on that. And in most cases, once you actually sit down and start analyzing where these thought patterns are coming from, you'll find that it's because you have a problem with yourself. Something, some unhealed part of you that you've really been running away from. Okay, so this is one thing I want you to start realizing. The second thing I've also discovered is that when it comes to judgment, especially of self, you know, whenever maybe you've fallen short of the expectations that you have for yourself, what do most people do? It's shame and guilt. You know, that's when people start finding ways to distract themselves with external things just to avoid dealing with the shame and the guilt they feel for themselves you know, also can also be viewed as also projecting on other people. But forgiveness is very essential. And if you've known my channel, you know, forgiveness is something that I talk about constantly. But a lot of people never, they they'd focus so much on forgiving others, they forget to forgive themselves for feeling short. So if you're watching this, my message to you will be that you don't have to be perfect all the time. It's impossible to be perfect when you're having this human experience. You cannot be 100% perfect from morning to evening. You're going to fall short at certain points. And to be honest, perfection is not something I seek for myself. Because I realize that I learn a lot, especially in those moments I'm imperfect. A couple of months ago, I told you about an incident I had with one of the shops that I normally go to shop from and I had an uh kind of like a confrontation with one of their tenants which was not one of my best moments I didn't like that about myself it's something that I felt so much shame because I knew I should have done better I should have walked away but I didn't I fell short I fell short so my normal reaction or anybody's reaction will be to feel so guilty and ashamed and probably never go back to that shop or you know, always like judge them or look at uh, themselves negatively for falling short. What I decided to do is first of all, sit down and accept that I should have done better in that situation. And I set that intention that the next time I'm confronted with that, I will do better. 
So right now my mind is so aware that anytime I come across any event that might trigger that for me, I'm always reminded of that event. I'll be like, no, this is not the way to act. So in that imperfect moment, I actually learned how to be better, how to be more understanding, how to be more compassionate towards other people. But I will never have been able to tap into that lesson had I not go through the moment of me being imperfect. You know, don't hate on yourself just because you made a small mistake, small or big, it doesn't matter. Just because you made a mistake, it doesn't mean that you have to keep on punishing yourself for the rest of your life. Accept that you did wrong. The key thing, first of all, is that you've learned your lesson. Because the whole point of our experience is just to grow and evolve. And you cannot do that without learning your lessons when you make your mistakes. When you don't learn your lessons is when you'll keep on making the same mistakes again and again. And here's something that I like telling people. It's that when you notice that you keep on going through situations over and over again, same experiences, it's not for you to sit down and start blaming other people for causing that kind of pain. It's for you to sit down and analyze what is it within me that keeps on attracting these people into my experience. What lesson do I need to learn? Because once you learn that lesson, you'll notice the experiences around you will also start changing. Because here is the thing, right? You don't go through an exam like when you're in school. Once you pass the test, did you have to retake it over and over and over and over again? Or did you move on to the next class? Chances are for most people, you move on to the next class. What's the point of retesting yourself if you've already learned the lesson? If you've already integrated everything that you had learned. The school will never tell you to take the test a hundred times just to confirm that you passed. No. Once you pass the test, they let you move on to the next grade, right? And it's the same thing that happens with life. You'll keep on attracting the same experiences because that's your test that you keep on failing when you keep on repeating the same mistakes. But the minute you learn your lesson, boom, it's done on to the next experience. Okay. But if you don't take time to analyze yourself and to face those parts of yourself that you don't like, you'll always miss those lessons. You cannot be a completely healed human being without integrating even those parts that you don't like about yourself. Because it's the parts that are good and the parts that are bad about yourself, they're all still you. So you cannot separate yourself from the bad parts and assume that you're going to heal yourself by only focusing on the good. It's not possible. The bad part is also part of you and you have to heal that and integrate it into your being in order to be a whole person. You cannot heal by hating on yourself. It's not possible. And this is why I advocate for forgiveness. Before you even start forgiving other people, it's forgive yourself for not showing up as your best. Forgive yourself for making the mistake of allowing certain people into your life, of allowing certain experiences into your life. And once you forgive yourself, you'll find that it's easier to have that kind of forgiveness to other people because now you can put yourself in that other person's shoes and see where that other person is coming from. But if you're unwilling to face the truth about yourself, it will be impossible for you to see the other person and kind of like forgive also their imperfectedness, you know, their imperfection. But if you accept yourself, then it's easier to see someone else's imperfection. Just realize that, you know, it's okay that you're not perfect. We can still find a way to work together. That's how I want you to look at it. So just to recap what I talked about, it's that anytime you find yourself judging another person, it's probably an aspect of yourself that you need to heal. And you need to sit down and figure what that part of you that you're refusing to accept is. And once you face that and accept that, then you can move on to the next experience. And you can stop attracting the same patterns over and over again because you will have learned your lesson. That's what I said. The second thing is that don't learn how to just be more forgiving towards yourself. Allow yourself to make all the mistakes that you're going to make. Wake up every day and aim to learn from each experience you have, even the ones you fall short on. And especially the ones you fall short, make sure that you sit down with yourself and analyze how you can show up better after that. Always learn your lessons. That's the key to most of the experiences that we have, especially the painful ones. 
learn your lessons so that you don't have to go through that test again and again and again okay so if you like the kind of content that i share with you just share with me down below about your experience with this i'd love to hear with you from you and also to hear your perspective on this you know i'm always curious about that if you haven't subscribed to my channel make sure that you subscribe right and also click on the notification bell that's next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any content to share out here and to say thank you so much for watching this video i've prepared a beautiful quantum flow meditation to help you tap into the states to help you with tapping into inner bliss and peace and inner oneness with yourself Just tapping into that sense of oneness with yourself with the universe with the divine you know connecting to your inner guidance if you need help with that maybe you struggle with that you can check out the quantum flow meditation i've prepared for you down below in the description box it's free you'll get instant access into your email inbox as soon as you just you know sign up for it and I end my videos by sharing how i can actually help you release all of this wounds and patterns and emotional trauma that you've been carrying with yourself i can actually help you learn how to forgive yourself and forgive your body and healing all these things that have been imprinted inside of you all the unhealed stories from your past life and also your present life if you're struggling with attracting the same kind of experiences over and over again and maybe you want to figure out what about you keeps on attracting these people these experiences into your being i do work with two modalities one of which centers on working with the akashic records it's called soul realignment the soul realignment is about figuring out who you are at soul level figuring out who you were designed to be by god what makes you unique what gifts did god give you that you can actually tap into to create a better experience for yourself most people have forgotten who they are they made so many choices just for them to be able to conform to what society demanded of them including in this lifetime they've forgotten who they are they've forgotten their uniqueness if you want to tap into what makes you uniquely you how you were created to live in this world if you want to learn basically the same the mistakes that you made in your past life you're still repeating right now that are causing all these blocks and restriction to appear in your blueprint that cause you to keep on attracting the same experiences again and again and again you can learn all that with the soul realignment reading you also get to learn where your soul is from if you have a sense that maybe you don't belong here there's a reason for that if you want to know where your particular soul originated from you can actually learn that with the soul realignment reading and at the end you actually get to heal all this karmic negative karmic experiences from your blueprint return back into integrity and now based on the awareness that you get in the sessions you get to create a life based on what you currently not want right now in your life not based on the mistakes that you made in the past but based on who you want to become going forward okay the second modality i work with is called quantum flow so quantum flow is all about rewiring your nervous system and getting the energy flowing again inside of your being inside of your body right inside of your chakras a lot of people have created blockages inside of your chakra system inside of their energetic being because of all the traumas that they faced in their life your body actually remembers this your body rest records all these experiences in your nervous system and if that memory is there you'll find that the vibration you're sending out into the universe is one based on who you were in the past so you'll keep on attracting situations over and over again because they are an energetic match to your past trauma and you always wonder why is life not moving forward for me even after all the meditation or even after all the mindset i've done on myself like i'm still not moving on with life if you want to rewire your body your entire being physical emotional mental spiritual energetic well-being if you want to tap into higher guidance get to unblock your pineal gland which is you know your connection with the divine so that you can receive guidance easily for a lot of people the pineal gland is actually blocked based on all the things that we're going through in this life you know 
the food, the air, everything that we go through that has caused this blockage is in your pineal gland. So most people, even tapping into that inner guidance and hearing that voice, it's so hard for them. With quantum flow, once you release all these blocks, you find that even tapping into your inner guidance, it's so much easier for you. So if you're curious about this, you can check out the links down below in the description box. Go ahead and book the session with me for Soul Relevant for Quantum Flow. Or if you have more questions on this, you can reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram. Or go ahead and book a discovery call and ask any question that you have of me. For now, I'm hoping that I will get to see you on the other side. And, and I hope that you get to choose me as your guide through this healing process for yourself. I'm sending you so much love and I hope I will see you on the next video. And make sure that if you haven't yet subscribed, subscribe to my channel and also click on the notification bell that's next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any content I share out here. Sending you so much love. Bye for now.